This is Dr. Lauren Lownan, and I'm going to give you a short introduction to the topic of multi-locus sequence typing, or MLST analysis. We're going to talk about what it is why you, and why you can do it, and some of the important resources to be aware of as you enter into this area of study. Multi-locus sequence typing is a characterization or typing method for bacterial isolates. It allows us to place them into known groups by identifying what alleles they possess from a set of established housekeeping genes, and then taking advantage of that information to assign them a sequence type. This uh, methodology takes advantage of the fact that there are literally thousands of alleles for any given gene that a particular type of bacterium can possess, and that each allele can be arbitrarily assigned an allele number. So it doesn't matter how much they differ from one another, the alleles, it just matters that they are different. They could be different by one nucleotide or by several nucleotides, but they're different, and therefore they get assigned their own allele number. Then, if you have allele numbers for each of a set of designated housekeeping genes, you can look at the combination or pattern of those numbers as a code or sequence type, type and assign and track the isolate by sequence typing. MLST always relies on housekeeping genes. Um, so I'm just going to change that, I should say. Genes, not strains. It is a method that began um, using PCR-based screening in the 90s, in the late 90s, but now it has been adapted so that we can do MLST typing with whole genome or metagenomic data. Here is an example of a, an MLST scheme for the pathogenic bacterium Vibrio vulnificus. So for each different kind of bacterium, you would have a specific MLST scheme. In the case of Vibrio vulnificus, this particular bacterium has two chromosomes, chromosome 1 and chromosome 2. And the person who established this typing scheme, Niall Bisharat and colleagues, chose five housekeeping genes from chromosome 1 and five from chromosome 2. Each of these little uh, shorthand codes is for a particular housekeeping gene, and I won't get into what those are, but they're easily looked at. And so we're going to type Vibrio vulnificus using these genes and these genes. And in fact, most MLST schemes rely not on the complete gene se sequence, but just on a partial gene sequence. So at, for the MLST scheme, there will be an allele database for each designated gene. So for the GLP gene, for example, there will be a database maintained where each allele has a number, and then there's a known sequence for that particular allele. So there'll be a GLP allele database, a GAR allele database, an MDH allele database, a MET-G allele database, and so on. And that way, when you get sequence information for a particular Vibrio vulnificus, you can look at that sequence data and you can determine which allele that organism has for each of these genes that exist in the typing scheme. Once you have that information, then you can look at the combination of alleles for the 10 different genes that the particular isolate that you're studying has, and you can look at that pattern, and you can use the sequence type database, and you can match the pattern to the sequence type or ST. So for example, maybe for sequence type number one for Vibrio vulnificus, any isolate that belongs to sequence type number one would have GLP allele 2, GAR allele 5, MDH allele 7, you know, MET-G allele um, 11, and so forth. But it's the combination of these numbers that gives us a code that can then be assigned to a sequence type. And then you have a lot of information about that particular organism quickly available to you. And so this is a technique that is used primarily for pathogen typing. And why would we need to do this? Because when you're studying pathogens and you're looking at disease caused by pathogens, you need to be able to do disease epidemiology. You need to, for example, be able to track outbreaks. 
So for example, in the case of Vibrio vulnificus, if somebody gets sick with Vibrio vulnificus in Florida, and then they also get sick with Vibrio vulnificus in Texas, one of the questions that um, medical practitioners need to know is, are people getting sick with the same Vibrio vulnificus or a different one? Or are they getting sick with a brand new Vibrio vulnificus that hasn't been seen previously? Or is it one that had caused disease in the previous year? So those are the kinds of questions that relate to the field of disease epidemiology. And in order to answer them, you need to have a pretty quick way to type or identify and group pathogens. Um, and MLST is one very convenient tool for that. It's also something that can be easily standardized and it's portable and shareable because it's very easy to, to share and store um, and standardize the use of genetic data. This is a methodology that was conceived back in 1998 uh, by Maiden and all, and I put the, that particular reference in the notes for this slide, which I've shared with my students. It's also not that hard to find by um, just looking online for MLST and Maiden in 1998. And the initial methodology used for MLST was PCR-based. So you would get a bacterial isolate, like something that was causing disease, for example, or something that just came out of a routine surveillance program, extract DNA from it, and then use that DNA as the template for a set of PCR reactions where you are amplifying all of the genes important in the housekeeping uh, scheme for the particular bacterium that you were studying. You would then take those PCR amplicons and you would sequence them. And in the late 90s, that would have been typically done with Sanger sequencing. And once you had those sequences, then you could use MLST to sequence type your bacterial isolate. We got a lot of information that way and began building those databases in that manner. Nowadays, in the post-genomics era, a lot of the data that we have on, on different bacterial isolates is um, whole genome sequences or metagenomic data. And so the MLST methodology has um, been adapted with a number of uh, a variety of different tools like the SRST2 uh, short read typing tool or uh, a number of other tools have been developed so that you could take input that is whole genomic data and then you could do MLST sequence typing. So you take your data like your Illumina data for example and then you align the reads from each isolate to reference sequences from the housekeeping genes that are in the typing scheme. And then based on that information, you can assign allele types and sequence types and therefore get the sequence type profile for the isolate that you're interested in. The advantage to this is that you can also readily then look at other DNA sequences in that whole genome that you have and you can get other information about the isolate um, that you're studying. For example, does that isolate contain antibiotic resistance genes um, and so forth. We can also then go back in time and reanalyze isolates as sequencing, uh, sequence type databases get updated and improved. So who comes up with the MLST scheme for each particular pathogen? The answer to that is that it will be an expert or set of experts in the area of that particular pathogen. So for example, Dr. Niall Bisharat um, and co-authors um, have led the charge in developing the typing scheme for Vibrio vulnificus. So they, they devised the typing scheme that I showed you earlier with the 10 different housekeeping genes spread across two chromosomes, and they tested it and they validated it. And today Niall Bisharat is the curator of information contributing to the growth of those particular MLST databases. If you want to take a look at the sort of publication um, that can come out to describe a new typing scheme, this is the publication containing the Vibrio vulnificus um, MLST scheme that I showed you a few slides ago. All of this information is maintained at a public open access um, database called PubMLST, and the website for that is pubmlst.org. And you can go there and you can find the typing schemes for about a hundred different um, kinds of organisms and more information. That um, organization is funded by the Wellcome Trust, 
and the database is linked to a larger system called the Bacterial Isolate Genome Sequence Database, or BIGSDB. And this contains MLST data, but also whole genome sequences, finished and curated sequences, antibiotic resistance uh, gene information, and more. So this is really an expanding and important resource to um, the community that studies pathogenic bacteria. And I expect that it will continue to gain expanded functions in the years to come. At the time of this um, presentation, there's information for more than 100 different types of bacteria there. So that concludes this presentation. Thanks for listening.